forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on future videos. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how you can use a new feature in Photoshop beta called Generative Fill, which can allow you to virtually change any background and swap it out for a totally different one from the one you started with originally. So let's dive into this video. So first thing you're going to need to do is you're going to need to install, either install or update Photoshop beta. Because if you have not already installed it, you're going to need to install it, download it. Or if you already do have it installed, you may have to update it so you have all the latest new features that it has to offer. And you want to make sure that when you do so, you are either installing or updating version 24.6. So in order to install, you're going to need to go to the Creative Cloud desktop app. And once you're there, you're going to go to Apps. And then you're going to scroll down where it says beta apps. And then from there, you're going to see it should say installed beta apps. And it ha if it has nothing there, you're going to want to obviously uh, install whichever one you want. And for this video, obviously, we're focusing on Photoshop beta. So either install or update that one. So since mine's already installed and updated, mine says up to date with a little green dot. And now that you have Photoshop beta now installed or updated on your computer, you are going to open it, obviously. Okay, so now that we finally have Photoshop open, we have a new window that says what's new and it says gener generative fill. This new suite of capabilities in the Photoshop beta app enables you to add, extend, or remove content from your images non-destructively using simple text prompts to achieve realistic results. Try now. So obviously I hit try now and now a new window is open that says discover. It says experience the future of Photoshop with generative fill. Jumpstart your creativity with generative fill and make stunning updates to your images with text prompts with the Photoshop beta app on your desktop. So it's just giving you a rundown of how to download it and so forth and how to use it. So I'm not going to get too much into this little box because I feel like that's kind of pointless when this is kind of the point of the video. It's just telling you exactly how to download it, which if you're already this far, you pretty much already have had it downloaded. So come on, Adobe. Really? So anyway, and at the very bottom, you're going to notice a video you can actually watch before you start using Generative Fill if you care to on your own time. But I'm going to get straight into our tutorial now. Now I have my photo open up in Photoshop. What we're going to do first is we're going to select our subject here in our uh, contextual taskbar. If this is your first time using Photoshop beta, you may be wondering, well, what is a contextual taskbar? Basically, it's just a taskbar that it tries to figure out what all your next steps are going to be in the editing process. So it really simplifies your whole editing workflow as a whole. It's really awesome. You're going to want to keep in mind that the contextual taskbar tends to move around a lot. So in order to prevent that, you're going to want to hit these three dots you can actually pin that bar so it stays put. Okay, so now getting back to our tutorial, we, once we have our subject selected, we want to invert that, uh, invert our subject. I hit this little icon here also. Now, after you've inverted your subject, you're going to want to click where it says Generative Fill, and you're going to basically just type some sort of text prompt in here. You're going to want to make sure you're spelling everything correctly, and you're going to want to just with something kind of descriptive of what you want your background to be, your new background. And then I'm going to click generate and see what happens. Okay, so now we have a completely different background, as you can tell by these flowers. To the properties area, and you're going to notice that there's three different variations of this photo. Or you can go down here back to our contextual taskbar, and you can toggle between the three variations with just the uh, back and forth arrows where it says one through three. And you can choose or decide which one you like the most, or if you don't like what it generates, you can even um 
hit generate again and watch what happens and you'll have a whole set of three new variations of the same prompt. So I'm not a fan of this first one, but let's go click into the second one and see if it's any better. So straight away, I like this one a lot better. Um, let's see what we have for our third variation though and see if it can top that. So this is our third variation. It's actually very similar to what we originally started with. Like the first variation we ever got was a lot like this. So it's not bad. So now we have our last example photo. This is actually um, a stock photo that I found off of Pexels. Um, so we're going to do the same thing. I'm probably going to do this a little bit faster. I'm going to speed through the, um, steps only because you already have seen me do it twice now. So you probably get how to do it at this point. So now I'm going to type a new prompt that says shallow depth of field, green bushes. Cause I want to get something that looks like a headshot for this photo since it already is pretty much a headshot. However, the, ba the current background is very distracting. So I want something that looks more clean and polished where it looks like an actual headshot. And it's not such a distracting background behind him. So these are our results. It's not bad, but I feel like it could be a little bit better. I'm going to see what we have for the other variation and see if there's anything better though compared to this one, first one. So this is our second variation. I feel like it looks very photoshopped, but the third option is definitely more so up our speed what we're looking for because you see the shallow depth of field behind them. It looks a lot more clean and more professional like an actual headshot was taken. And this was all created by AI. So I'm going to go ahead and give this a thumbs up because I am super happy with its results for this last one, especially. So I want to let Adobe know that this is the feedback I'm giving them, that this is really great and exceptional work for this new feature. Well, that is it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate it. And definitely be sure to let me know in your comments. How do you feel about this new technology, this new AI? in Photoshop beta. Uh, are you excited about it? Are you worried about it? I know everybody has so many different opinions about this new feature, Generative Fill, and um, just start a conversation about it. However, please keep all comments um, polite and don't be rude. I don't really want um, you know an argument going on in the comments. However, any, any, any constructive criticism against it or any positive comments is fine as long as we um, are respectful of each other. But definitely let me know, how do you personally plan on using this new technology, this new feature in Photoshop beta? And I will catch you guys in the next one. Thank you guys so much.